Peace be with you. Friends, it's a joy to welcome you to worship as we celebrate the Feast of All Saints today. I'm so glad you've joined us. All that you need to participate in worship today is an open mind and an open heart. If you'd like to learn more about our parish and our mission, you can check out our parish website, and that's at the link in the video description below. There's also a link there for you to make a donation, and if these online offerings have been a blessing to you, we do commend that to you for your consideration. Now our gospel reading today comes from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 6, verses 20 to 30. Let's hear these holy words together. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from any way, anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, friends, you may know that there are many words that only churchy people use with any regularity. One of these words is the Latin triduum, or triduum, occasionally you hear people say. A word that, incidentally, the spell checker on my computer doesn't even recognize and kept switching to titanium as I was typing out my sermon, but there you have it. Even many churchgoers would likely scratch their heads at the mention of the word. But triduum means simply three days. And that term is used most often by Christians to mark the holiest days of the Christian year, the Paschal Triduum, which begins on the evening of Maundy Thursday and runs through Easter Sunday. Now, I had never heard the word used to describe this time of year, that is, All Hallows' Eve, All Saints' Day, and All Souls' Day, until a few years ago when I stumbled across a poem by Catholic author Mary Patrice Whaling entitled, Autumn Triduum. I'd like to read that poem for you. Autumn Triduum. On Halloween, we shouted trick or treat and held out plastic pumpkins for our loot. We'd say our thank yous nicely and we'd scoot to neighbors' houses farther down the street. November 1, we would be off from school. We'd sit in heavy sweaters, hearing mass for all the saintly dead who earned their pass to paradise, Jerusalem the jewel. Now All Souls Day, I linger late in bed. November winds torment the weary trees. I listen to them groan. My obsequies are haunted by my much beloved dead. November mirrors everyone who grieves, but Easter will return with April's leaves. It is a wistful poem, a meditation on the movement of the church calendar and how, in this part of the world at least, the calendar accords with the changing of the seasons. 
The Paschal Triduum moves from the darkness of death to the new life of the resurrection, heralding the lengthening days and budding blooms of spring. This autumn Triduum, of which the author writes, moves in quite the opposite direction, from the youthful joy of Halloween treats to the holy day of obligation hearing mass for all saints, to the day of grief-filled memory for all the souls of the faithful departed who have passed from this life. As the leaves fall from the trees and frost forms on the ground, November mirrors everyone who grieves. That is the autumn triduum. I feel I should add that though it is an accident of history that the armistice which ended the Great War occurred so close to All Saints and All Souls, our yearly commemoration of the selflessness and sacrifice of those who died in our country's service on Remembrance Day each year intensifies this feeling of November being a season of remembrance. All Saints Day and All Souls Day are observed every year on November 1st and November 2nd, respectively. The former is a much earlier feast day of the church, of which we have evidence from as early as the fourth century. All Souls emerged much later, though still long ago, in the 11th century. There's often much confusion about these two days and how they're related to one another, for both are commemorations of the dead. The simplest explanation is to say that All Saints Day is a celebration of all those holy men and women who have, through the mercy of God, in combination with their own faith and good works, achieved the beatific vision. Those saints who are now in the presence of God and strengthen us with their examples and aid us with their prayers. All Souls is a little more complicated. For Roman Catholics, it is a day for, of prayer for those uh, in between, we might say, those in purgatory, the place where it is believed that even holy men and women must go to be purged of their sin before entering into the presence of God. Now, Anglicans have historically rejected what our prayer book calls the Romish doctrine concerning purgatory as, quote, a fond thing vainly imagined and have adopted either a more expansive view of God's mercy, so expansive as to immediately blot out the sins of this life, allowing the dead to enter immediately into God's nearer presence, or rather a more agnostic position, which states essentially none of us knows the condition of the dead, but we do know the eternal mercy of God and hold faith in the glorious future that God has prepared for his people, whatever that future may be. Still others have argued for a reclamation of an in-between, a place of preparation after we die, seeing it as a logical notion that we who are guilty of dust and sin must be ready to accept our invitation to the table of divine love. Fundamentally, what we pray on All Souls Day is what we pray in the burial office, that the good work which Almighty God began in the faithful departed may be perfected unto the day of Jesus Christ. As Father Stephen Reynolds writes in For All the Saints, our book of readings for saints' days, he says, for growth and perfection must be infinite because our perfection is communion with the infinite God. So we magnify God's power by confessing that the divine mercy continues to perfect the souls of the departed according to the measure of eternal life revealed in Jesus Christ. Now, beside being commemorations of the dead, both holy days, all saints and all souls, have in common that they point beyond the present age to an as yet unrealized future, when all of God's people return to Christ and are gathered to the heavenly banquet. Of All Saints Day, which we celebrate again today, Father Reynolds wrote, the church also believes that our life on earth has eternal consequences. And so our remembrance of what the saints were is directed to what they are. It is the church's conviction, a conviction often expressed in the Anglican tradition, that the saints continue to be our partners and fellow servants before the face of God's glory. We pray for our present needs and the saints pray with us, not as if their prayers were better than our own, but because they are still bound to us in mutual service 
as members of the one body of Christ. He concludes, for this very reason, we may say of the church's saints what the letter to the Hebrews says about the Old Testament saints, that they and their service shall not be perfect until all of God's friends have answered the invitation of Christ and arrived at the banquet of glory. For that is the ministry of the saints in heaven as on earth, to help others become partners in the salvation of God. And friends, it is that companionship that Father Reynolds so eloquently lays out for us. It is that companionship that we feel with all of the departed, all saints and all souls, that inspires this autumn triduum and makes this time of year not just an occasion for wistful remembrance, but also a season of rejoicing for what is and what is yet to be. A season that whispers sweet comfort in the words of our Lord. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. For just as Easter will return with April's leaves, a yet more glorious day crests the horizon. The day when all shall see their God and their fellows united in a single peace. I opened with a poem of a wistful sort. And I'd like to finish with one that is much more hopeful by the 19th century American romantic James Russell Lowell, who reminds his readers of the saints in paradise and in our midst, entitled, appropriately enough, All Saints. One feast of holy days the crest, I, though no churchman, love to keep. All saints, the unknown good that rest in God's still memory folded deep. The bravely mute that did their deed and scorned to blot it with a name. Men of the plain heroic breed that loved heaven's silence more than fame. Such lived not in the past alone, but thread today the unheeding street and stairs to sin and famine known sing with the welcome of their feet. The den they enter grows a shrine. The grimy sash an oriole burns. Their cup of water warms like wine. Their speech is filled from heavenly urns. About their brows to me appears an oriole traced in tenderest light. The rainbow gleam of smiles through tears in dying eyes by them made bright. Of souls that shivered on the edge of that chill ford repassed no more and in their mercy felt the pledge and sweetness of the farther shore. And God bless you. Amen.
Let us offer our prayers to the source of all love and all life, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, we pray for all who call themselves Christians, that we may become a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to the praise of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Andrew and Rosilla, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers, that they may remain faithful to their calling and rightly proclaim the word of truth. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Charles, our King, for the leaders of the nations and all in authority, that your people may lead quiet and peaceable lives. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for this municipality and those who live here, the poor and the rich, the elderly and the young, men and women, that you will show your goodwill to all. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the victims of our society and those who minister to them, that you will be their help and defense. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those preparing for baptism and for those recently baptized, that they may be strengthened in the faith. Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints who have found favor in your sight from earliest times, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and those whose names are known to you alone. And we pray that we too may be counted among your faithful witnesses. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, whose people are knit together in one holy church, the mystical body of your Son, grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now in the words our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.